Hello, I'm Sam Palermo, and welcome to the overview of high performance SIRDES design, Transcend 200 gigabit per second. So let's start with a basic block diagram of an analog SIRDES transceiver link, where the primary function that we're trying to achieve here is to take a parallel set of bits at the transmitter, serialize them, send them across the channel, and then at the receive side, uh, perform deserialization. But one thing that makes this difficult is the frequency dependent loss characteristics of the channel, which typically dis displays a low pass characteristic. So how we compensate for that is typically with equalization starting at the transmit side with some type of FIR or feed forward equalization. And then at the receive side, continuous time linear equalization and decision feedback equalization. However, as data rates grow, above 56 gigabits per second, it gets very difficult to implement systems with relatively simple binary PAM2 non-return to zero modulation. Instead, what we need to do is implement more spectrally efficient PAM4 modulation where we're sending two bits per symbol, such as the I diagram shown here. Overall, we're gonna be talking about key channel characteristics and communication techniques in lecture one. Now, one issue with PAM4 modulation is that it is more sensitive to residual ISI and requires precise equalization that's, implement, that's difficult to implement solely in the analog domain. This motivates ADC-based receivers, which quantizes the output of the receiver front end in order to perform ISI cancellation in the digital domain to allow for a flexible advanced equalization and symbol detection. Now, these architectures should benefit from improved area and power with CMOS scaling, but of course the power dissipation of both the ADC and digital equalizer is a major issue. So let's take a deep dive into some of these equalization implementations, starting with the basics of transmit side FIR or feed forward equalization. Here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take our single bit pulse response and basically pass it through an FIR filter such that at the output of the channel, we get an overall pulse response that has much less ISI components to allow us to go from a completely closed eye to an eye that has significant voltage and timing margins. Now, because we do have a limited transmitter output swing, we're essentially peak power limited, Unfortunately, we can only achieve this by attenuating the low frequency content of our signal, something that we call de-emphasis. Now, if the number of FIR filter taps that we need to implement are relatively small, then we can implement this with analog summation at the output. However, as the tap count grows, architecture which perform the FIR computation in a DSP followed by a DAC-based output stage, offer a better solution. And shown here is an example of that. Uh, this here is a 224 gigabit per second transmitter that uses a DSP to calculate the nine tap FIR filter, and then follows that with a seven bit DAC-based uh, transmitter output stage. Now this design achieves one volt peak to peak differential output swing with this tailless current mode output driver that also performs the final four to one output serialization. Also to achieve very high bandwidth in this transmitter, they're utilizing a 56 gigahertz seventh order LC output network. Now due to the flexibility of the DSP, it can also relatively efficiently also support PAM6 modulation. So we're going to cover key SIRDES transmitter and equalization topics in lectures two and four. Moving on to the receiver side, in the front end, we generally implement continuous time linear equalization, such as the 224 gigabit per second PAM4 inverter-based front end uh, shown here. So this design effectively implements a high-pass filter function up to the Nyquist frequency, with various design techniques that include the series inductive peaking that generates a complex conjugate pair for the high frequency Nyquist peaking 
that's programmed with this parallel RQ transmission gate to, to adjust the peaking gain, while the low frequency peaking is provided with this AC coupled GM2 path where this GMD uh, diode connected load uh, can adjust the pole zero frequency here. Finally, this parallel RC transmission gate provides a programmable DC gain. So we're gonna discuss CERDI's receiver in analog equalization topics in lectures three and five. <clears throat> now, after the front end, we typically quantize our signal with a high-speed ADC, such as this 80-way time interleaved uh, design shown here. Now, in order to do efficient uh, sampling of the input signal, that's generally implemented in multi-rank sampling, uh, where this design uses an eight-phase uh, rate one clock that is efficiently uh, generated with an ILO. And each of those then drive 10 parallel unit ADCs operating in a time interleaved manner. So these unit ADCs are all based on asynchronous SAR architectures, such as the design shown here, uh, that utilizes top plate sampling uh, to achieve good gain, balanced uh, DAC switching for constant common mode to the input of the strong arm comparator, which we'll discuss in detail in lecture three. And overall, we'll discuss key time relieved ADC design uh, issues and digital equalization in lecture six. Now, high frequency, low jitter clock generation and distribution is also very important. And shown here is an example of a um, digital fractional N based clock generation that generates nominally a 28 gigahertz quarter rate clock for a 224 gigabit per second PAM4 transceiver. So some of the key design techniques used here are a current reused coupled frequency doubled oscillator. And then in the clock distribution, you can see that they're using uh, some shunt series clock distribution buffers to meet very low jitter requirements. Now at the receive side, we need to perform clock and data recovery. And shown here is an example of an ADC-based design that uses a PLL-based CDR with a digital loop filter with a baud rate Mueller-Mueller phase detector that controls an eighth rate PCO with 14 gigahertz differential outputs that then passes through a divider chain to ultimately generate uh, four 1 16th rate seven gigahertz phases that that provide clocks for 16 rank one phase interpolators that generate the clocks for the uh, rank one of the uh, time relieved ADC. So we're gonna be covering key clocking circuits in lecture seven. Finally, the last topic that we're going to cover are optical transceivers that allow for extended reach across the entire data center. Now, there's currently a, a lot of excitement around co-packaged silicon photonic transceivers based on micro ring modulators and drop filters that allow for inherent wavelength division multiplexing and power efficient operation uh, at moderate data rates, such as this 32 channel WDM implementation. Uh, where each channel is operating at 18 gigabits per second, and the front end power is 0.5 picojoules per bit. Also, NVIDIA recently announced that they're going to be shipping this year um, systems based that, that have these 200 gigabit per second PAM4 transceivers based on this uh, micro ring modulator technology. So we're gonna be covering optical transmit and receive front ends in lecture eight. So I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of the key topics that we are going to cover in the course. And I look forward to your participation in May. Thank you.